It's really interesting, and I just got chills from my angels, which means they are confirming this, agreeing with this. You know, wake up and live before you die. Today, I sat at my desk and I looked over at something I had just done yesterday and printed out, which is Questions for Life, Cindy Eiler. So I started to read through these and go grab a cup of something and let's have a chat about this because this is some serious stuff here. Let me read you this question. How do I live a life true to myself that serves others. And when I first saw that question, the answer came quite easily out of my mind onto the computer paper. My answer was to take care of myself and love myself. And then I wondered, is that a normal answer? I was wondering, would other people answer it that way? Or would people think that that's a strange answer? Would people normally think like that? I decided to get on Google and ask the question, how do I live my life true to myself? We'll talk about serving others later. And as I typed that in, I saw some memes pop up and strange, I thought it was strange, but most of the memes that popped up were around the five regrets of dying. It was all about all of these quotes about what people would have wanted if they had thought about it or knew how they would feel when they were dying. There's five that came up a lot, but I'll tell you the first one, there were tons of memes with that one. And it says, I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. Eleanor Roosevelt. And I couldn't believe how many came up on that page of just that specific quote. It must be an, an important quote to a lot of people. I'll say it again. I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. And you know, when we grow up, our parents often expect us to do and live life the way that they did, the way that they thought was the right way to do it. And some of us did it, and some of us didn't do it. Some people follow the typical grow up, go to school, get married, buy a house, have kids, and then they find when they're like 40 that or 50, I don't know, it's different ages for different people, that, hey, okay, I like did all those things, but I'm not feeling fulfilled. Other people will totally dive into their children and make their children the center of their universe and make that their fulfillment. But then, you know, eventually those kids grow up and go to live their lives. And then the parents are like, what do I do now? Like, I don't have anyone to take care of. Some people will go on to take care of their parents or find someone else to take care of because that's what they know. It's important to have the courage to live a life true to yourself. And sometimes that might mean doing things that other people don't like or don't agree with. I certainly know that when I quit my corporate job that my family and friends thought, what are you doing? Like you have a really good job. Why are you leaving to go essentially talk to angels, work with the angels, be with your angel? <laughs> like they couldn't get it. And I had a young son at the time and a single parent and they were not happy with my decision but I knew I was sitting at my job feeling like I was dead inside. I, it was unbearable 
to be there every day doing that. I just knew in my heart that this is not what I can do for the rest of my life. I, it's an awful feeling to sit at your desk and feel dead. And so I made some decisions and I did it in a responsible way. I think, you know, I didn't just get up and quit. I made, took steps and made plans and did what I could to bring the process along and follow my angel's guidance to when I could quit and what to do and all of those things. But I am so grateful that I did what I felt in my heart. And then later, years later, um, maybe, I don't know, 13 years after that, I ended up leaving my whole life and moving to Egypt because I felt that, I mean, there was a lot of reasons and I'm not gonna go into all of that now, but you can read about me on my website, cindyeiler.com, my about page, and it does tell the story. I just felt that's what I needed to do and I did. And a lot of people wouldn't just make decisions like that, but there's something about me. When I feel I need to move on or do something or go somewhere and I really feel it, I can't stop myself. I have to do it. Now, it's not like I just got up and walked out of my house and didn't care about who was in my life. They were contributing <laughs> to me leaving, first of all, and the decision to go to Egypt was like step three in the plan. It wasn't like I woke up and said, I'm going to go move to Egypt today. No, it wasn't like that. It took, it, it was a process, believe me. Anyway, that was really important. The next one, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. The other night I was in bed and um, I was, you know, I had lit my incense and I was laying in bed and I, you know, it was just kind of winding down and I and the thought came to my head that so many people are so distracted from their lives where they might be overworking putting all their focus on working or maybe working out or uh, their children or whatever would keep you distracted during the day it can be doing things that are good and helpful and honorable but at the same time it is important to spend a lot of your time, if not on a daily basis, on a very often basis, spending your time contemplating yourself, checking in with yourself. How am I feeling today? How am I feeling in my life? How am I feeling about the work I'm doing? How fulfilled am I? Is there anything I could be doing better? Is, do I need a break? Do I need to go? take a trip or a, go on a spiritual journey to find out more about myself right now. Stop and question yourself rather than being so busy that you're completely distracted away from your life. That is so detrimental. And people think that, oh, I, I just have to work, 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 and they're always on the run, you know, go to work, go do this, go do that, you know, take care of this person, take care of that thing. Then by the time it's nighttime, they're just like going to go veg out by the TV or just pass out in bed and they didn't even think about themselves all day more than brush your teeth, eat something, whatever. Okay. It is important to take downtime. It is important to go nurture yourself. Go spend time with yourself you don't even have to go anywhere but when you're working so much or just keeping yourself so distracted all the time you are not stopping to check in with yourself and be honest with yourself that is a big one the number three i wish i had the courage to express my feelings huge huge I want to um, point out at this point a book, The Four Agreements. I recommend that to all of my clients, my students, everyone. That book is a very easy read. It's so interesting and it's so valuable. It was life changing for me. Life changing. Did I say life changing? 
One of the four agreements, they're all important, but one of them that was really amazing to me was don't make assumptions. If something is bothering you, or if you need to know something, or you need more information because you're freaking out about something or don't feel comfortable about something, it is okay to ask. Because if you just assume what somebody's thinking, what somebody's doing, what somebody's saying, what somebody's believing, you're probably going to be wrong in there somewhere. Thus the agreement, don't make assumptions. It is much better to ask than to go crazy making up what you think it is. And it is okay. And I'll tell you, when I was in a relationship and I was unclear a lot of times, very unclear a lot of times. And he always made me feel like, it, you know, like, don't ask me or, you know, you, you just felt weird to ask. But when I read that book, I was like, hmm, I can ask. And I did. And I didn't care what I asked. If I didn't know something and I needed to know something, I'm not going to spend my time worrying about it and making things up. I'm going to ask. And I did. So it is okay to express your feelings. It is okay to ask questions. It is okay to tell people how you feel. Now you don't have to do it in negative, unkind ways. You learn how to communicate and you do your best to communicate clearly and calmly. And sometimes you might not get your answer right away. Some people aren't good at responding to things. They need a little time to think about it for whatever reason. And so that's okay too. Like it's not like you're going to demand an answer. You ask the question and say, I would just really like to know. And if you feel that they're not going to answer at that time, fine, just let it go at that time and then revisit it again later. It's not good to hold things in and it's not good to not express how you feel. And I'm not saying you should blame people for how you feel, although you, they may be causing you to be upset, but you have the choice to be upset or not. You can just say, when you do this, I feel this way. Don't just start expressing yourself in the way you're accusing people because that gets you nowhere. You really need to learn how to communicate. Holding things in will eat you alive and it will make you start assuming things probably in the worst ways. Number four, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. How many times are you so busy you haven't caught up with your friend for a week, for a month, for six months, maybe a year? Your friends are an important part of your life. This is where you can decompress. This is where you can renew your connection with people that are kind. Hopefully you have kind friends. Um, this is where you have a chance to talk about what you've been doing. So you start thinking about more about, wow, that's what I've been doing and this is how I'm feeling. It's important. And I also highly suggest that you get away with your friends when you can. There's nothing more soul fulfilling than when I take spiritual journeys with my friends. It's the best thing ever. And I am so blessed that my close friends are also people that I work with. So we are going on spiritual journeys together at least two, three, four times a year. Of course, not with COVID, but uh, on a normal basis, we are meeting up and spending quality time together as well as spiritually growing together. It is beautiful. It is probably my favorite thing in the world. And I'm sure that's one of Cindy Eiler's questions for life because I remember writing that. Number five, I wish that I had let myself be happier. And that is a huge one. Many times we put off being happy because we're worried about one thing or another, or we want something, or we think we need a specific thing in order to be happy, or things don't feel great, or things are not perfect yet, and when, that, when everything is the way I want it, then I'll be happy. Life doesn't work like that. 
You have to be happy on the way. You have to be happy during the process. That's how you become happier. You have to be happy to be happier. If you're waiting to be happy, you're just going to be waiting to be happy. You're going to keep having situations that keep you from being happy because you're not being happy and you're waiting to be happy. So you have to be happy on the way. So what, I mean, that one ties up all of the, the other four is, you know, letting yourself be happier. What did I say? How do I live a life true to myself that serves others? My answer again was to take care of myself and love myself. And when you take care of yourself and you love yourself, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel good. There's a much higher chance of being happy when you're taking care of your own needs. How is taking care of myself and loving myself serving others? Because I can't truly serve others to my best unless I feel my best. It's only when I'm feeling good that I can truly serve others. Now, a lot of people serve others being depleted, being a mess, just letting their, their life be stressful and tension because they are serving others. And they might be helping others, but they are draining themselves in the process. You really cannot serve anyone at your best when you're not being true to yourself and taking care of yourself. It is so common to see people draining their energy, stressing to do things beyond a comfortable capability and put others first. Although that might sound honorable, it is depleting your energy, your mind, your emotions, your body, and it will end up hindering you in every way inside and outside in the world around you, in your life, situations, relationships, and in living a thriving life. It is totally going to get in the way being at your best. You simply cannot give to others what you cannot give to yourself without causing yourself a life of difficulty and will definitely negatively impact your health and well-being on every level. Taking care of yourself is your responsibility. You weren't born to burn yourself out putting everyone and everything else ahead of yourself. That isn't being self, that is being responsible. It's really interesting, and I just got chills from my angels, which means they are confirming this, agreeing with this. The answer is to take care of yourself and to love yourself. And I find it so amazing that when I Googled the question, that the topic that came up in relation to that was the five regrets of the dying. So that means that this is a big deal. And I really hope that you heard this message because you got to start living. Wake up and live before you die. That's basically it. It is so important for you to live your life. So I'm going to leave you with one more thing. Don't wait for everything to be perfect before you decide to enjoy your life. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for being here and 